Top Tip Tuesday time again. Bob here from Insidium. Hello. In today's video, we're going to be recreating this really cool dynamic sand simulation. And we'll be setting up a custom velocity field so the sand is drawn towards a spline of your choice. So, loads to do on this one. Let's jump into cinema and we'll get started. In our scene we have a plane primitive which is our floor, it's a thousand by a thousand, we've got an XP collider tag on, zero bounce, 12 friction. We have this XP emitter, you can see look our circle emitter here, if we go to the object tab we're in circle mode, 200 centimeters radius on the Y plus. I actually want to lift this off the floor just slightly, so let's go to our coordinates and put one centimeter in the Y. In the emission tab, we're in rate mode. We are going to uncheck full lifespan and give these a lifespan of about maybe 100 frames with 50 variation. We'll leave it on a thousand for now. Got a speed of zero and a radius of 0.5. And actually, I'm going to hit Control D to bring our project um, settings up. And I'm going to actually simulate this at 60 frames per second, but we're going to um, be um, interpreting that as 30 once it's rendered so we get this kind of playing back at half speed okay so that's cool let's go back to our emitter emission tab and because we've made those adjustments look it's changed the lifespan because we've changed the frames per second and actually we don't want that so I'm going to put that back to what it was 100 to 50 excellent so if we hit play you'll see that we've just got particles appearing like this all right, now let's go to our nexus to bring in the physics. We're going to bring in a nexus gravity. There you are. We're going to put this down on, say, 400, switch off visible and editor and leave that. Now we're going to bring in our fluids. So let's go to nexus, NX fluids. We want SPH, granular mode. Let's put our substeps up for higher accuracy. We're going to put check density on because we've got particles being born on top of each other here. So this will just make sure that we don't have any with too high a fluid density, which can cause instability. That'll sort that out. And then in our granular settings, we don't really want any clumping at all. So I'm going to put the friction down and then the stability and cohesion that help with that clumping. I'm going to put that right down to the minimum. So now if we hit play, we've got a very basic granular solve going on there we go right so now what we want to do is draw these particles towards our input spline could be a logo could be writing whatever you want if I activate this flower spline this is a flower primitive 50 by 150 centimeters for those radii there five petals and I'm just going to lift this off the floor as well because we want to create a ridge of particles above the floor so look let's put the Y on say 12 centimeters and that's just lifted it up slightly look so we've got our um, spline up there okay so we're going to create some velocity vectors using this spline with a flow field so let's go to our X particles dynamics here object we're going to bring in an XP flow field and with this flow field let's just make it not as tall and lift it up a bit so something like that widen it out a bit there we go now by default we get these random vectors that we don't want that's because there's a random layer in it by default so let's just delete that out we want to add a layer so we're going to add a two spline layer and if we come down, you can see, look, it says, what spline do you want to use? So let's put our flower in there. Come back up. We want full strength. We want a cell size. This is the kind of resolution. The lower this, the more resolution you have. It's like voxel size. So let's put that sound to 10. I'm just going to go to my display and just switch off show vectors. We don't need to look at those. And we are going to give the particles not just direction because they don't have their own speed. So we want to give them speed and direction. That's obviously velocity. And we'll put that on 300. So that's quite high. And finally, we want to switch off the fall off because we want this just to be everywhere inside the bounds. It's got full velocity. So now if we hit play, yes, look, they're all going towards that spline. Cool. So now what we're going to do is just get this speed under control a little bit. We're going to go to Nexus. We'll bring in an NX speed modifier. We'll leave it in incremental, but we'll increase it by zero so they don't get any faster. But now we can clamp the maximum speed to something quite slow, maybe 65. Now hit play and let's have a look. Yes, that's looking way better. 
Right. What we could also do is add a little bit of variation here to our flow field with a field. Let's go to the flow field object, to the fields tab. We're going to add a random field. And this random field, let's just view it. We'll go to the field settings. We're going to increase the scale up to, say, 1,000. We're going to add an animation speed of 100%. And we want we want very defined areas of red and yellow. So let's go to the remapping. And the best way to add contrast is in the contour mode. Go to curve. And then you can add a contrast curve here. And you see in the you see we've got these very clearly defined parts of red and yellow. So where it's yellow, it'll get full flow field strength. Red, it'll get zero. All right, very good. So now let's just switch off that view. So now we've got a really kind of random. Yes, see how as that noise in the field animates round, we get particles getting pushed towards that spline, but then the gravity pulls them down, and we get this really nice motion. That's looking very nice indeed. So let's go to our emitter now and we're going to go to our emission tab and let's just emit way more particles. Let's do 25,000. So this will obviously take longer to simulate, but we're going to get some really nice detail uh, uh, of our particles moving towards that spline. Yeah, that's looking really cool, isn't it? Look at this round here. So we'll leave that just uh, going through for a few frames until we've got some kind of clearly defined ridges here. So this is looking really nice. And I pause that. So then if we go to our Redshift render view and hit render, and yeah, look, so you can start seeing the effect taking place here. We've got our ridges of our particles and they're animating in that really cool way. And when you render that out and slow it down and interpret that render at 30 frames a second, you're going to get this really nice movement. So that is the basics. Obviously, you can go way more complex than this, but that is the basics on how we set up this cool dynamic sand logo reveal.